Hello everyone, welcome back to the simulator world where we're building driverless cars in, with a simulator. In this case, it's Carla Simulator. Today we're going to talk about a couple of things. One, uh, we will try to use some of the example files or example codes that come with the simulator included, which are great. But secondly, I would like to get into using more of maps. Um, so the question I've got today is how can we grab the actual map around the car at the time of driving okay so for that we have to look at a couple of examples of code that come with the simulator just in case you you don't know where the examples live so if you go within your car installation which could be just on your c drive and if you go into python api and there is a directory or folder there called examples and that's where all of them live okay so i've currently selected that folder here and i wanted to show you a couple of things first first of all and i understand many of you have tried it already but uh, it's actually quite cool the first one we're going to look at is manual control which if we launch it gives you this waiting 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 whoa interesting car so you can pre uh, put a car in autopilot by pressing p you can see autopilot is now on but there is a number of options available here so let's have a look at what they are and a lot of them are listed here what you can do there are there is a lot of cool things and many of them relate to camera so if we for example press um this is now camera one so if we press key one uh press key one again it says we now have ca rgb camera on if we press two we're gonna get into this uh depth camera which you know you know maybe in the future we may use it i'm not sure how for now anyway the three gives you this camera depth grayscale again so i can see that it sort of emphasizes objects uh, quite far so i don't think how it could be useful in the immediate row that you get uh, camera four logarith logarithmic scale depth camera so that's looking a bit better but yep anyway you get the idea this is camera five which is semantic segmentation camera but in a, in its native raw form you can sort of see that something is happening there and you can use it camera but i usually prefer to use this version of it which is like translated to normal colors that is camera six or six, yep seven then we get camera eight which is this one and then we've got a lidar which is key nine and you can actually circle through all of them by pressing tilde button and then you've got this dynamic sensor as well which is sort of how lighting a thing things that are kind of moving but mm, i don't know how it could be useful at a big scale now, if we go back to the main camera RGB, that's our normal thing. The other cool thing that we can change weather, like if we press C, we can circle through uh, different settings of the weather and you can see the names of them, cloudy noon, cloudy sunset, default, normal. This is like hard rain at night, hard, hard rain in the afternoon. So. Um, my, my only point here, there is a lot of options that you can we can use and generate in our images. And there is also a button to, by the way, if press H uh, for help, you can get these things. And there is somewhere, you see, if we press R, we can uh, start recording images to the, uh, on, onto our disk for future use and build our models. And this is the kind of functionalities that I would like to use. However... The purpose of today is slightly different. I would like to leverage functionality that lives in this guy that is called no rendering mode example. If we run it, we get a very cool thing, which is um, a map. So again, we press P to go on autopilot. The car starts moving. Uh, I assume it's a car, it could be a bike or a pedestrian or a cyclist for all we know. And, and I hope it's not a pedestrian that sort of runs in the middle of the road this fast. Anyway, um, there is a couple of modes here. So if you 
press tap, you go. You can go into like overall map of the town, and you can magnify it, and you can zoom into where the player is at the moment. And by the way, let's see now where are we? Who the player is this time? Okay, it's a cyclist. So, oh, he's enjoying his life in the rain, I'm sure. And look at it. I don't think he's got his helmet on. Anyway, if we switch to this, what if, and go back to this kind of um, hero map mode, which essentially shows the map around the car or the bike in this case. So what I wanted to do in this project is I wanted to combine what you saw in the previous examples and to uh, essentially have this map view as one of the options or one of the camera views in the um, previous example in the manual control where you can just flick uh, between different cameras whoa he's going he's going Ooh, look at him riding in the rain very cool um, so so what i wanted to do is i wanted to sort of capture this area of the image and use these um, these images later for various things so uh, obviously there is a lot of use for uh, the map surrounding the car and as a as a very minimum you can sort of create it as a overlay what goes on around the car uh, it's like a display think of it as like what they do in tesla where they show you the road immediately in front of the car and show cars next to next to other cars next to yours and um, that kind of thing so this this is kind of gimmicky example but it could be useful like the other thing that we could do with these images is we could train um, a model to to build to use front-facing camera and then uh, build maps for, or effectively it's like taking the view uh, in front of the car and transitioning it, it transitioning it into a map like a top-down map what you can see in front of you right now and there are uh, also many other uses of this mapping images like for the for the planner like how the what the car sees in front and how we can sort of translate it into okay um into like planning decisions like, is the road in front of me wide enough to go there or you know all of those things so uh my primary objective would be uh, to to build a model that sort of uses the front-facing camera normal rgb or semantic camera and then translates it into this map but to be able to train a model i need to capture these mapping images and save it on the disk and that was my objective so and with that we can go back to all right so in my github repository which by the time this video comes out should be updated with this uh, what we've got here is a new folder called map projection and the file i was going to show you today is this one map grab build one so if we if we run it uh, all right so we have similar situate we to a uh, similar example to what um, manual control example does however we have an option in this case if i if i i can use different cameras like for example three four five all all the cameras right however for camera two which was that useless sort of uh, flickery image example i did this so I effectively um, replaced it with that um, code that I got from no rendering example. So I made the car or made the, the program to create and capture these mapping images. And the other thing we do is and what I changed here. And if we go to the example, when we press M, we can start recording images so for example if i go now and select this folder uh, where is our example this is our car driving around so if i press m now we should start cap seeing capturing images being captured as we go okay so what what we've got essentially is a functionality to and we can turn it on and off so i accidentally double clicked it so only captured a couple of images first time around but 
as we as the car is moving around you can see we capture in images and this is exactly what i wanted to achieve right and the this shows that you can actually capture images from normal cameras and these mapping images and i will use them later together to train a model to build these mapping images uh, from the front facing camera okay that was my main objective how i've done it now let me just cancel this and open it as an example so the resolution of these images is actually quite small and uh, what what we've got here is uh, probably sufficiently enough to make up what goes in on in front of the car the great thing about these images is that it's oriented as of the car right so the car is facing forward and that's what's in front of it and this is perfect so we didn't want these images to be pivoted left or right or whatever it just needs to follow the direction of the car and it does so as we close this and i'm not ready to do anything i need to delete these guys as far as the code is concerned um so i've changed there is a lot to talk about and i will not bore you but essentially the approach i was making this is i was taking the code the the manual um the normal manual drive example and then i was copying into that piece of code the the mapping bits that i was taking from no rendering mode example okay so and then i was just um playing with these classes to make sure they they work like for example this is um, um map image which is a class that um coming from no rendering mode example and so pretty much left it unchanged but then what i had to do is the world object or class in the it existed in both so what i was doing i was carefully copying bits uh the the main the basis of it was from the manual control example but then i was copying bits and uh different methods uh from like from from the no rendering mode like for example show nearby vehicles that's a method that i copied from no rendering mode and then i was just being careful to see which uh, like what what errors i was getting i was fixing them slowly the trick that i had to do at the end where i replaced everything is i think here do, 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 do. so in the the main simulation uh in, in the main loop of the game or simulation um so I've got this condition where I say if my camera selection is um, the second from the list because the lists uh, always start from zero in Python. So if it equals to one, which means I press the uh, key two to select the mapping view, uh, it will use the rendering or what it will put on the display is the mapping part so essentially it will tell you that it's still using uh, like whatever camera it is but it will be just replaced with the map render um, method which is the render that draws that immediate map and then within that render method I've also got a couple of things to capture it as an image and save it onto the disk and if I find it yes so if um, so i've got this map capture on and off um, attribute of the world class and if it's on so i'm just saving it um, grabbing a section or cropping a section from the middle of the overall map image making it smaller 
and you can have it as a so I divide it by two so I s essentially take the uh, one fourth because I take half of the width and half of the height of the image and then I save that middle bit onto a on into a file on on the on the hard disk in this folder that, that you can also set up as a constant and then essentially the the file name of it is just the timestamp uh, at the time of the generation. So those are the main sort of things that I've changed to how I was, um, you know, creating this logic by combining two different examples that come from color simulator with the simulator itself. And hopefully it helps you. You're welcome to copy this and uh, start creating your own simulations and saving maps. One thing I noticed though that um, if we if we go and use it again, the way it saves images sometimes is a bit funny. So we set it to another pilot. We go into the map mode. We press M to start recording the images. So the the thing that uh, sometimes weird. You see the position of the car on different images is not exactly in the same location. You can see on these images that I've got in front of you now, the, the whole sort of outline of the car is at the bottom of the image. But then if we go to the beginning, it's only the front part of the car uh, is um, in the image. So it's not quite consistent because ideally we would like on those images, the car will be exactly in the same spot. And I was, I think it's happening in mostly when the car is uh, like turning and going through bends like this. Um, the, the, the picture at the time is being rotated and those calculations sometimes treat the sort of center of the images inconsistently. So we end up having these slightly inconsistent images. However, I think we can deal with it later in kind of post-processing of these images where we can look for those green uh, outlines of the front of the car and disregard anything behind it. So, which is kind of an extra task later, but I couldn't figure out quite easy how to make them consistent. Okay. Right. So, and that's all I wanted to show you today. So again, we're using this great advantage of using a simulator because this map is being drawn by knowing exactly what's underneath uh, this town because the real car can just see what's in front of it, right? But in a simulator, you've got all the objects available to you to be able to draw the map in this case. And that's again, a greatest, uh, one of the great advantages of using simulators for self-driving. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll uh, look forward to make other videos and follow, follow up on this and training the models that will draw a map for us. Cool. That would be nice. Thanks again. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time. Bye.